Talking about barnstorming nights out, I saw this post on the Bergen Community subreddit, and it made me wonder. It made me wonder about the desire for some people to want politics reflected in every area of life. And I personally think, unpopular opinion, I don't personally think raves, clubs, music in general should be political. It should be apolitical. Obviously, if you want to be political yourself and express your thoughts and feelings, cool. But I don't think it's necessary or necessity. When it comes to a nightclub, I would much prefer, prefer, I would much prefer it be a politically neutral platform. Whether you're on one side or the other side, you can express your views. I don't really agree with what Hoare did, where they were taking people's scarves away, when they were trying to protest in favour or in support of the Palestinian people and shit. I think that's abhorrent. You shouldn't be taking people's flags, Israeli, Palestinian, doesn't matter. Be politically neutral. But I think having a stance and then allowing that stance to influence who you book and who you don't book, I think is a bit dumb because music by its very definition should um, be a, an overarching umbrella should be a space that welcomes all people regardless of what political leanings you have if anything there should be no points to discuss in the dance floor no one fucking wants to know about that everyone wants to drink everyone wants to snort everyone wants to suck and fuck and that's it that should be the main reason why you're going to a club not to have your politics echoed on the dance floor that's bullshit in my personal opinion but allegedly there have been some people who have been unhappy that Bergheim haven't spoken out or haven't really made it clear where they stand when it comes to the Israel-Palestinian thing, right? Uh, when it comes to, sorry, when it comes to the, of course, the genocide of the Palestinian people at the hands of the Israeli government. So in this particular aspect, I don't mind what Bergheim is doing. I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing that Bergheim are keeping their nose out of it and just basically allowing whoever goes to play at Bergheim, if you want to make it political, you can. If you're very on one side or the other side, it's not going to affect them booking you. But I also respect the DJs who are foregoing playing at Bergheim because of their political leanings. That takes a lot of courage because we all know how big of a club that is and how much it matters and how important it is to play there and what it can do for your career and blah, 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 blah. blah. If there are people who have the courage of conviction, if there are people who are so steadfast in their point of view that they're willing to, you know, um, affect their career negatively by not going and playing at that place because it doesn't allow their political leanings, only respect given to them. But I don't think they should be forced, Bergheim, to make a stand or make a stand, make a start, make a, you know, have a stance publicly either side, either way. I don't think so. I think it's a good thing that they're probably being neutral, keeping stum, and just allowing the people who play there to share whatever they want to share. And that's basically it. But this is according to the Instagram page, Ravens of Palestine. This is something I didn't know, by the way. It's posted on Bergen subreddit and people were talking about it. I had no idea this was a thing. But allegedly people have been boycotting and not playing there. Which might explain why a lot of the lineups I've read recently haven't been as like blockbustery and shit. They've been still good because I think Bergheim's one of their strengths is their programming. I think for such a big club, they do such a great job in terms of always, for the most part, having very good lineups. Like most months are like seven out of 10 is the mid is the lowest, I think, which is a really hard thing to do because there's only a finite amount of like really good high level DJs anyway. And you're also a massive club. So to keep having all your months be very, very good, seven out of 10 is also, you know, goes to show that that place is run correctly. But I've noticed in the last few months, there's been a distinct lack of really like blockbuster names. So that could be because people are staying away on purpose. According to his post on Ravens of Palestine on Instagram, it says as follows on the caption, if you've looked at Bergheim lineup recently, you may have noticed an increasing predominance of residents and local artists. This isn't due to a change of their booking policy. We know that at least 40 DJs have pulled out of Bergheim gigs in solidarity with Palestine. The exodus began with an underground artist, but now extends to some of the biggest international names in techno. Again, pretty good. Because one thing we've noticed during the pandemic, some of the biggest DJs in the world refused to take time off. They were playing plague raves. They were going and traveling to third world countries where their laws and their regulations were a little bit more lax and taking advantage of it and still playing. So big time DJs have no shame in terms of playing when they're not meant to play and keep on playing for the money, right? They don't give a fuck. No matter how rich they are, they're going to keep on playing. So the fact that some of these people are not playing at one of the biggest clubs in the world is maybe proof that maybe some of them have a little bit more courage a little bit more principles and morals than I think they would. Now, don't get me wrong, 
Bergheim doesn't pay as much as some of the bigger clubs out there, some of the bigger festivals or some places in general, because I've heard that they keep their fees pretty low, but the opportunity to play there is the best. So people take the opportunity to play there over the fee. But regardless, you have to give these guys praise because, you know, there's not a lot of people that actually have the courage to stand up for their convictions. So if people are doing it, fair play. But then it made me think about this whole, you know, boycott anyway. And I was surprised when I read, when I, when I scrolled down on Ravens of Palestine, this is actually a thing. So if I scroll down, this is actually a thing. So this is actually a thing people are doing. And according to Ravens of Palestine, people are also asking the question, is it counterculture? Is boycotting Burger and counterculture? Um, I don't think, I wouldn't think it's counterculture. I think it's a bit unnecessary just because they don't want to make a stance or have a position either, either side. I don't think that makes them complicit. You know what I mean? It doesn't make them, you know, um, Zionist. It doesn't make them you know, um, endorsers of the IDF or anything. So, so they just don't want to be involved. Or they don't want to get overly political. I think that's everyone's provocative. Everyone's provocative. Like if you're, you're allowed to not have an opinion on politics, I think so. But let's say what they say. Curse you of Ravens of Palestine. A great number of DJs have been withdrawing their labor from Bergheim in solidarity with Palestine. Again, these, the words that they use, political people, their labor, like what? Um, however, some of us are still choosing to cross the picket line. We understand that this venue has a particular legacy on its own scene and want to move with empathy and good faith. In the next slides, we address some common questions around the boycott. Music is about peace and unity. Isn't boycotting counterculture? They say. Boycotts are centuries old form of political resistance deployed in many historic struggles. From the Montgomery bus boycott to the apartheid. <laughs> Honestly, don't they see how preposterous and ridiculous they sound by attributing not playing at a nightclub to the apartheid in South Africa? Like, come on, man, wind your neck in. It's just music. It's not that deep, bro. Anyway. Right now in Germany, artists, mainly black, Muslim and Jewish, are being targeted, surveilled and even arrested by the state. Bergheim's deplatforming and mistreating of Arabian Panther. Ah, oh, that Arabian Panther person is a little bit of a psycho anyway. So that's not really a good place to kind of put it from. But let's continue. This boycott is targeted effort to resist the crackdown, get accountability from venues and create a pressure for an end to the genocide in Gaza. That's what I don't understand. They honestly think if you, if you put pressure on Bergheim, they think that's going to somehow lead to a ceasefire. The ceasefire is only going to happen if you put pressure on politicians. Clubs can't affect the ceasefire. Protesting in the streets is going to affect a ceasefire. Not clubs. I don't know about you, but I don't think clubs are that powerful. Every time a DJ crosses a picket line to play at Bergheim, they send a message that censorship is acceptable. No, they don't. They send a message that they don't give a fuck. They said, which you're allowed to. You're allowed to not care. And you're allowed to not be judged if you don't care. Like, I don't understand how not caring and not having an opinion is almost as bad as having an opinion. Like, what? This empowers other clubs to deplatform artists and undermines the efforts in Germany and other Western countries. Okay, whatever. Another slide. Isn't it better to take the gig and donate my feet to Palestine? What if I what if I wear my kufya on stage? Sure, you can do this for every club that is not being actively boycotted. <laughs> sure, but not that club. Okay. But for live venues being boycotted, please don't cross the picket line. Solidarity works when it's collective and united. Every time a DJ branches off and decides their own way to help, it undermines the resolve of the movement and spreads confusion and encourages other artists to ignore the boycott. What about if your reasons and the way you approach the boycott are just wrong? What about that? What about if I have a difference of opinion? What about if I support your boycott, but I don't want to boycott myself? What about that? Um, am I not allowed? So you have to, you have to sacrifice your progression of your career to help a boycott that's trying to call for a ceasefire that isn't going to happen off the back of you boycotting. The ceasefire is going to happen when you put pressure on politicians and governments. You don't put pressure on politicians and governments by going through nightclubs. You just go to the politicians and governments like people have been doing. People have been protesting in the streets all the time. Keep doing that, keep ramping up the protests, but not going to a nightclub. Like, I don't, whatever. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm dumb. You waving the Palestinian flag at Bergheim is not going to change anything. What's boycotting going to do then? What's boycotting Bergheim going to do? Please, someone tell me. It's not going to win the hearts and minds. It's not going to bring people together. All it does is legit... Isn't that the same thing you can say about this? Doesn't this effectively not bring people together? All it does is legitimise a club that has been censoring our peers for political expression and slow down efforts on... That's false, though. 
there's tons of people that play at Bergheim who are their entire Instagram stories is a non-stop highlight reel of highlighting the struggles and the pain and the misery and the suffering of Palestinian people. Their entire feed. And they still get paid to book at Bergheim. So I don't believe this whole censorship thing. Maybe some people are doing other things and they're being not told to do it. But most people I've seen have been very vocal and very pro-Palestinian are still playing are still playing at Bergheim. This is a misnomer. How can one DJ boycott Bergheim help end the genocide? I want to hear this answer. Let's hear this answer. How can one DJ boycotting help end the genocide? Bergheim is a, one of the most important institutions in Germany and culture economy. It is synonymous with Berlin's electronic music scene. A coordinated withdrawal of international DJs from Bergheim is a devastating strike to Germans' model of anti-Palestinian cultural censorship. We know that these actions work. After the withdrawal of 70 musicians from CTM Festival earlier in the year, the Berlin Senate immediately dropped its plans for a new anti-BDS clause. What does, that, what does that have to do with the fucking war? The removal of legitimacy from complicit cultural systems is key and means accelerating the demise of the colonial log logics. As we've seen with other BDS victories, as well as successful admissions boycott of the apartheid in South Africa. We ask, so basically that there is no, they can't, they're just waffling. There is nothing that someone can say here that will let you know that boycotting Bergheim is going to end the genocide. It won't. We are asking DJs to take the stand now. They're hoping it does, but they, don't, they know it won't. Like, this is so weird, man. This is so weird. I'm from a marginalized group. Isn't it more important to get representation? Exactly the same arguments have been made by those who boy broke boycotts to play apartheid in South Africa, in segregated US venues. And indeed, Bergheim, Bergheim needs you more than you need them. Their legitimacy depends on the coast. Oh, here we go. Now we get to the real point. Now we get to the real point. The underlying issues with platforms like Rebels for Palestine is that they feel like there's probably not enough representation. Look at the pages. DJs against apartheid, right? I'm assuming a lot of these pages have un unaddressed resentment against certain clubs because they feel like they don't represent the diaspora of DJs that exist out there. They don't re represent the patina, the fucking breadth of DJs that represented out there, which is really unfair because, you know, it's just one club. One club can't represent the entire world, can't represent the entire scene, you know, and they're doing, I think they're doing a fairly good job so far to get as many people who are unknown and represent all different types of communities and races and backgrounds to play at their place. But they can't, you know, make everybody happy. Cool, that's the case. But I think that's the main thing at heart here because look at this, look at this sentence. Bergheim needs you more than you need them. Their legitimacy depends on the cosign of BIPOC DJs. This is why nights like Reef are so important to them and why CTM festival withdrawals are so damaging. So they have this idea that, you know, that club is not important. The people that are important are the black and brown people that allegedly invented techno because we invent everything, right? Black people invented fucking skiing. We invented snowboarding. We invented fucking printers, iPhones. We invented everything, right? We were Kangs. So obviously because we were Kangs, we deserve everything. <laughs> Even though this club was invented by two white guys and shit. <laughs> oh, fucking hell, man. All right, whatever you say, guys. They want you on their lineup, but do you respect? Do they respect you? Stories about Bergheim's racism have long been circulating, from Fear Parish account of having his set stopped for playing D Dilla to Jasmine. <laughs> That's hilarious, though. <laughs> they just think Jay Dilla's shit, and they stopped him for playing. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. No, that Jay Dilla shit, man. Fuck off. To Jasmine in Fintini's experience of racism and transfer bounces. Okay, in tw so two accounts spread across like what? The entirety of the fucking club being around. Fuck off, man. I'm not buying this. The wholesale withdrawal of marginalized DJs could be um, immediate, unignorable pressure of Bergheim. It may even create conditions for generally inclusive programming where representation isn't contingent exploitation. It is already very representative. Honestly, this this idea that that place is racist, homophobic and stuff is very dumb because when you go there, it's literally the United Colors of Benetton. The lineup is probably, they probably have a way more diverse lineup than Fold does. Fold, one of the best clubs in London, has an all white resident DJ list. Everyone on their resident DJ roster is white. Most of their lineups can contain white people. 
fair enough, they might cover the spectrum of queer and LGBTQ flags and shit, but for the most part, they're all white people. At least Bergheim has actual diversity in a range of different people from all over the place. Just, just look at the tags. Go on the Bergheim fucking location tag on Instagram and look through the people's posts. Everyone from ac around the world goes to visit that place. So to say that it's racist is really insulting to people's intelligence because you see it with your own eyes when you go there. No, it isn't. It has its issues, like that whole entire city has its issues, right? We know where I'm going with Berlin. We know its history. So, it's, you know, it's got a lot of work to do. But to say that that place is inherently trying to exploit <laughs> marginalized people is ridiculous, really. And it's also funny, isn't it? On one point, BIPOC people are marginalized. And another point, we're the most important people to the scene, right? Hmm. How is that possible? How are we both the victim? How are we both the victim and the bully? <laughs> How? How is that possible? Um, what if I get blacklisted from Bergheim? Will it ruin my career? Ravers and DJs are people that create and sustain club culture. Clubs are nothing without us. No one, ven no one venue should be seen as an ultimate guarantor of the success and validation. Yet this is how the scene at large now regards Bergheim as a kind of feudal lord to be feared and appeased in return for favours and protection. No one actually sees it. It's just an important place to go. We should have places that are like heralded and held up high in esteem because of the good work that they do. That's not a bad, that's not a bad thing. It doesn't make you look like a fucking loser. It's not a bad thing at all. I think it's fairly normal for you to have like a reverence for a place that's done so much for the scene and has been around for so long. You know, it makes complete sense. I don't see why that's an issue. I don't see why you should besmirch or ridicule somebody for having an ambition to play at one of the most important clubs, you know, in the scene. Is it everything? Of course not. But, you know, things can change also because imagine if the temperature changes around it and you're like sacrificing your career for something that is maybe going to change soon, the sentiment around it, and then suddenly you're out of a gig now and this thing is all trugging along. I don't know. I personally think everyone should be fucking apolitical when it comes to music, in my personal opinion. But I could be, I could be, I could be really wrong there. This isn't healthy. Artists and musicians deserve dignity, autonomy of their labor. We should not be accept the arbitrary rewards of self-appointed gatekeepers. We should not, they're not self-appointed though. We appoint them. We give them that power because we think the place is fucking amazing. If it wasn't self-appointed, if it was, if it wasn't given by the people, it wouldn't still be here many years after. They don't give them, they rarely even do, hardly anyone from the club even speaks about what they do. It's mostly people like ourselves, the people that play there, that go there, that give it legitimacy. What are you talking about? Many DJs have already turned down Bergheim gigs. They are booked and busy. Yeah, they can. Um, if you're not booked and busy, you probably don't have the opportunity to. And why would you, you know, sacrifice your career for, I don't know, whatever. Um, the community will, will love and support you taking a stand. The strike fund is there for you need it. Any clout from playing Bergheim at this moment is dubious history isn't kind to artists who cross the picket lines whatever this boycott is historic an opportunity to build a truly um uh liberty was that a libra a libra mm, this boycott is historic opportunity to build a truly liberatory rave culture based on solidarity and mutual aid trust in your peers respect yourself and do the right thing last slide we know that main djs have been recently turned down for Bergheim without speaking on it publicly we understand the recent the reticence in going public but doing so is going to be an incredibly powerful way to strengthen and support the boycott. With the occupying entity poised to invade Rafa, we need everyone to exert maximum pressure now. If you come forward, the community will support you. Okay, cool, I guess. Cool, man. I don't buy it. I think it's a nonsense. I think it's a waste of time. Um, I personally think clubs should be apolitical. I think you're well within your rights as a DJ, as an artist, as a raver to decide where you want to go based on your own political leanings but i don't think you should expect that on clubs and institutions and platforms like this you don't they should be apolitical they should be neutral they should serve both sides of the argument three sides four sides whatever but they shouldn't be in the business of tearing flags down denying people gigs because they're very vocal no but to expect them to make a stance and then to that stance only the right one to be the one that you have is ridiculous to my in my opinion that's a little bit tyrannical in its own way. A little bit tyrannical. A little bit. Again, I could be wrong, but I don't really agree with that. But check out Raiders of Palestine. They're a good page, good resource for all this shit to get plugged in on this kind of information. For the most part, I don't think many people outside of people that are really politically inclined care about this sort of shit. But it is nice to see there are people that do and who are making a stand and who are making it a part of what they're speaking of and demanding more. And hopefully, hopefully it does lead to a ceasefire. I don't think it will. I think the ceasefire will come from 
pressure on governments and politicians and shit. But if it does happen this way, then you can't blame these guys for taking their stance. But I think there are other ways to go about it. And I think if you're a DJ coming up, you have a responsibility to your own career. You have a responsibility to how hard it is to fucking make it, to take every opportunity possible to get your name out there and to climb up the ranks and then use your platform to spread a message you want to make once you're famous or on your way to becoming famous. You know, sacrificing or punishing yourself and denying yourself opportunities uh, based on, you know, situations like this is a little bit short-sighted in my opinion but i could be wrong 